an example of an acute. Well, probably the best example is the one that's afforded by the homeopathic remedy aconite. Um, this is, this is uh, appropriate for situations in which we've become shocked due to exposure to a chill east wind. That's the most typical causation, exciting cause, for the aconite imbalance. And our response to that, the organism's response to that, whether it's cat, dog or man, is to produce a fever first first off. And um, that that that's appropriate. Unless, of course, the fever is too high, too intense. If it's too intense, too sharp, if the fever goes up too rapidly, then naturally the person experiencing this will think, my God, I'm going to die. And an overwhelming um, explosion of anxiety results. Such a person did or indeed, would that animals could talk, will be telling us, I'm going to die. Fact. Because that's how it's, that's how it's perceived by the person. Now, if this is the case, aconite is the remedy. Because if aconite is tested on healthy individuals during what we call homeopathic proving, this is exactly the state which arises. And there are sensations which accompany this which are quite typical. They're interesting. There's either numbness or tingling. These are the typical, typical sensations. And you know, you go numb on your way to death and you go tingling on your way to recovery. So it's exactly in that moment between dying and recovering that aconite is, as it were, stuck between these two places, between life and death. So they say, of course, I'm going to die. Between numbness and reviving, tingling. Great remedy, Aconite. It's in every first aid kit. Belladonna. It's another example of an acute situation with a fever, an immense fever, but it's of a very typical type and quite different from Aconite. Here the fever is of the throbbing variety. And all the blood goes to the head, to the carotid arteries throb. The blood is the blood, the head is suffused with blood, and hot, and the eyes dilate, and the heat is palpable to the fingertips of the, of the observer. On the other hand, the hands and cold, the hands and feet are often chilly, icy cold. Literally, all the blood's gone to the head. Not an ideal response, in fact, because um, blood to the head means that. The imagination and the mind is filled with, in Aconite's, sorry, in Belladonna's case, it's f the mind and imagination is filled with monsters and horrible hallucinations. The, the child needing Belladonna can look at the mother with dilated pupils and see monsters, not her. And in this situation, might behave violently, trying to scrabble or attack the, the visions that it sees. And then again, that kind of fever can lead to febrile convulsions. So these things are states which are a terror for any mum. And many of us have seen just these states arising. They usually come on in the afternoon and they get progressively worse. In the afternoon, means there's time to call the doctor. It's an emergency call. And these days, it's difficult to get doctors out, isn't it? So it's very frightening. And Belladonna is an angel of grace. An emotional exciting cause, probably the most obvious, is a grief situation. Especially if it's, if you know, at the moment, at the moment, you, you know, you may have spun yourself a webwork of beautiful illusions, um, put all your eggs into one basket in regard to a particular person, who then says, well, actually, I've gone out to see someone else, and I don't want to see you anymore. You've been dumped. So the Ignatia response to that exciting cause is one of cramp and spasm, especially, especially in the area um, around the heart and the chest feels as though it's been suddenly compressed and burdened and it's hard to get 
air in and out and you're gasping. It feels as though this great weight is pressing here, this tension. And your throat has been grasped too and there's a lump there. And would that you could cry. But there's somebody next door and, you know, it's embarrassing. But if only and then the pressure's too much and the whole thing bursts out. And it's a hysterical, huge event. These are not the gentle trickling tears of, of a more quiet disposition. This is mega catastrophe. That's the Ignatia form. But of course there are other forms. Some people do literally take the, the grief very slowly into their system and become gradually paralyzed by it. The energy sinks degree by degree by degree. And they just finally waste away. This would be more like a phosphoric acid, for instance. More typically with, you know, several griefs, each undermining the organism more. 